Alrighty, well, good morning everybody, and time once again for my pseudocast. Um, and for those that don't know what a pseudocast is, it's, this is not quite a podcast. Uh, I'm not live streaming this or anything, it's just, um, uh, just going to do some talking for, rough, for very roughly 15 minutes. Um, sometimes it might go long, sometimes it might go short, so it's just, whether or not I'm on a roll. And, um, what you're seeing now is um it's a it's one of Jupiter's moons called Io. I don't don't really know how it's pronounced, but it's I O. That's that's how it's spelled. But um it's um I think it's like one of the most volcanic uh, one of the most volcanic planets out there. Or moons, excuse me. That but that's why it uh that's why it looks so yellow. It's because of all the volcanic activity going on. So, but uh, like usual, just gonna play some sounds from it, and I'm also gonna have to make up. I might have to make sound adjustments here from time to time too, because it's too loud. Okay, but um, otherwise, um, but let, but um, been listening to a lot of uh. Uh, it's a, I would not a, not a band, but it's a DJ. It's a DJ named Kid Koala. <laughs> I'm hooked. This is a uh, love at first listen right here. Um. But yeah, um, I first found out about him. I was listening to, I was watching a, watching Amoeba, the What's in My Bag, where, he, where various musicians will. They'll get up. They'll get cameraed. Like walking around buying their, you know, buying whatever it is you want to buy, and then they'll they'll sit on a couch, and then they'll they'll talk about what they got and why. But but I watched I watched his. Um, I just you like I said, he's just a he's just a DJ. He plays with turntables and sampling and stuff like that. And um, he had a what of the he had like a little little single record of um of what's basically chicken clucking. Like it was, it was like a little song I heard, probably back when I was a kid or so. It just something like that. But um, but yeah, it this guy's like a he's a turntable DJ, and he's got music like this. So naturally, somebody like that, yeah, I'm gonna go check out. I uh, checked out his first album. Um. Carpal Tunnel Syndrome. I'm hooked. So yeah, definitely gonna be listening to him a lot more. Um, I might buy the CD. I don't know. I, mean, I would. I don't. It's against, for lack of a better word, it's against policy, to for me to buy any records that are beyond the late '80s. Usually, uh, records that come from the late '80s beyond, there's a chance that uh, that uh. Those uh, records were u- were used using CDs as a base. Like they're not made from the original masters. So um, any records that come out after CDs came out, I'm kind of distrustful of. So I mean, I want my vinyl to be original, not fake. If that makes any sense at all. Basically, if um if I wanted CD quality or MP3 or in later years, MP3 quality music, I would get the CD or the MP MP3. I mean, I'm not vinyl. If I buy vinyl, I want I want to hear vinyl, not a CD or an MP3. So, oh, and uh, also, I'm drinking a can of V8 Energy pomegranate blueberry. That stuff is quiet. Okay, that's a little better. Here, let me uh let me turn it up from my end.
because I kind of want to hear it too. Yeah, I got two. I got two different volumes going. I got the volume in my earphones, and I have I have the uh, volume level as it's presented to me on my OBS uh, recording software. Still looking. Okay, hopefully that should be close enough. Now I got half a mind to start this over. But yeah, isn't that and that's something that's something else that kind of surprised me too. After thinking about it, you know, of all the of all the types of musicians out there that uh, that ha that actually that were buying like diverse styles of music I never would have expected it to be rappers of all you know of all genres you know I think there was like there's like one guy in there he was buying Kate he was, he was actually buying Kate Bush um another rapper he was at they were um, actually buying records from my probably my favorite band the residents they actually bought like three of them this was the last genre of music I ever expected uh such diversity I mean, if anything, I want to, I probably would have expected the di diversity to be, not really sure. I, or basically, the, the trend that I see in these uh, Amoeba videos is, you know, punk musicians tend to buy a lot of punk records. You know, country musicians tend to buy a lot of country records. I mean, there might be some diversity, little, a little bit of diversity here and there, but that's about it. Um, I think it was, uh, I think it was Ice Cube, but, uh, he was, he was buying, like, Aretha Franklin records. I think he bought, um, he bought Billie Holiday, like an old school jazz singer. Never would have expected that. Again, I'm, you know, I'm following the trend. I mean, and, um, I know, and I try not to stereotype anyone, but again, rappers were the last people I'd expected to have such diverse tastes. I mean, I always thought it would have been the the avant-garde or the art rock type people, you know, like talking heads, that kind of thing. You know, I figured that they'd be the diverse ones, but no. Um, art rockers tend to buy a lot of art rock records. You know, and, and I probably said it already, but country musicians tend to buy a lot of country records. And then Metal musicians, same same thing. They buy a lot of metal records. So yeah, that that kind of threw me off. And and yes, I'm still playing Slay the Spire too. Um, I kind of I came to this realization sometime last night that I think I'm playing Slay the Spire a lot probably for the same reasons that I was getting into fighting games a lot um it, I hadn't played a I hadn't consistently played a fighting oh wait wait, wait let me stop um I'm, for those that have seen my other or for those that have heard my other cast I'm definitely going to be repeating myself here but anyway but uh I haven't consistently played a fighting game in like 30 years like since the 90s so, I suddenly just got, I, I got a, ever since watching the documentary on Broly Legs, I, I just jumped right into fighting games, but, um, I think I'm into Slay the Spire now, uh, Slay the Spire parallels fighting games, I haven't played Magic the Gathering in several years, so, I think, uh, probably, the, that's probably why I'm playing Slay the Spire so much, it's just, it's, kind of a subconscious need to catch up so I'm hoping that once I'm all caught up with Slay the Spire played it all the times that I wanted to I'm hoping to go back into playing fighting games again but again they will we'll see come later 
Um, one, I did write this down on my blog post, but one thing I do like that a, that a deck building games like Slay the Spire has over fighting games is in the realm of streaming. Because since, since, um, Slay the Spire is not a very active game. I mean, it's turn-based. I have, a, I have an easier time talking to my viewers now. I have an easier time interacting with them since I'm not, I'm not busy. I mean, I'm not, it's not like fighting games where, I mean, they're fighting, kind of obvious, but I'm busy fighting, you know, to, to talk, to, you know, to talk to people. So, if I'm in the middle of a game, um, people chatting with me can actually be pretty, uh, distracting. So, that's definitely one thing that, uh, Slay the Spire has over fighting games. So, I can, uh, I can kick back and talk to people. Oh, and, and speak, and also, um, at my job, Walmart, we have to go back to wearing masks now. There's, um, I can't remember the specifics, but I think there was a, I think there was like an outbreak. Well, there, there was a, I think a lot of, no, I think, um, I didn't watch all of, I didn't watch, uh, all of Bill Maher's, uh, Friday program. I just watched, like, the new rule and that's it. But, yeah, I think, uh, the first thing he said on his monologue was, like, Master coming back or something like that. And, um, after reading a few, after reading a few Jessica Wildfire articles, um, I, I kind of came to the conclusion that, the reason that uh, we have to wear a mask now is because uh, people aren't wearing their masks. So I, yeah, so that that kind of ticked me off a little bit. But um, uh, I can't remember. I, I mean, don't don't quote me on this, but I thought I, I heard or read somewhere some time ago that uh, places like Korea, uh, Japan, China. Or basically, damn near any other country except ours. The moment they had, the moment, I mean, the moment the pandemic hit, or the moment the pandemic became a national emergency, or I, I can't phrase it properly right now, but whatever any other country except ours declares a national emergency due to a pandemic, everybody in that country, whoosh, they got, they slapped those masks on, like all of them. It ain't like here where. Where a good chunk of the people are like anti-vaxxers and they're anti-mask because, you know, they don't want people trampling on their, you know, they don't want people trampling all over their freedom and all that stuff, you know, it's just, so, but yeah, it, but apparently there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of deaths in this country because people aren't wearing their masks. Again, it's, I don't need to wear a mask, it's what I got an immune system for. Those are the ones that end up getting getting affected and eventually dying and let me uh just check out the volume okay but yeah it you know so I mean they so in those in in those countries they you know they you know national emergency they're all running around wearing masks they're all you know they're all trying to get vaccinated but they don't, and because of that, uh, they don't have near the outbreaks that we do. You know, here it's like, masks have to come on. Okay, take them off. Oh, put them back on again. Oh, masks have to come on. Okay, you can take them off now. Nope, got to put them back on again. So, I mean, there's, so even for the, even for the times that we have the masks on, you know, like nobody's getting vaccinated because again, anti-vaxxers. I mean, and also, I'm not a, I'm not a hypocrite when I'm talking about this either. I mean, and once again, once again, um, pseudo cast vets. I'm probably going to be repeating myself here. I think, but I mean, for the longest time, I was, you know, I I had the same belief too. Like, I mean, it's what you got an immune system for. I mean, and last and last I checked, the the. The COVID virus is not the AIDS virus. It's not going to shut down your immune system. You know, and it's 
it's not the Ebola virus either. Uh, I, it's been a long time. It's been a long time since I actually, I actually looked up the virus, but I think uh, it had some way of bypassing your immune system or causing your immune system to treat it like it doesn't exist or something like that. Like I said, I don't remember the details. It's been a long time since I read it. Um, but yeah, the C, the, the C virus ain't the Ebola virus. Um, nor is it the uh, anthrax virus. I believe that, uh, that you know, that, that literally causes your immune system to turn against you. I, I can't remember. The anthrax virus said something... Uh, it's supposed to, the, the, it's one of those where the bacteria, I mean, it's not a virus, but it's a bacteria. I mean, the bacteria itself can do some damage, but it's also the, the waste products that used to be behind. That's also pretty toxic as well. Um, it's supposed, it's supposed to cause your white blood cells to, to produce this chemical or like produce this enzyme or something that while in small doses is harmless but in huge doses it can be fatal there's something along those lines like I said it's been a long time since I read up on it but yeah it but last I checked, but last I checked the COVID virus isn't the anthrax virus either so I mean the conclusion I came I came to on that is I mean if you can write up if you can write out the virus you'll be fine I mean getting the vaccine would be a huge plus but ultimately not a requirement but again um i found out recently that nope that's wrong i mean people i mean people are still dying because of it um i think children are dying of it too and i believe the and i believe one of the biggest causes of this is because of the anti-vaxxers um which now that I think about it, isn't a new concept. Uh, this book I read many years ago, Eat, Drink, and Be Merry by Dina Dell. I guess uh, way back in like in the 90s or 2000s or something like that. Uh, famous actress and model Kelly LeBrock. She's like, a, she's anti-vaccine. And one of her kids got sick. Like, oh, what was it? I want to say tuberculosis. Whatever, whatever, her daughter got tuberculosis or something like that and refused to get a vaccine or... No. She's anti-vaccine. I think she was anti-medicine. I might I might have my story wrong, but it's been a long time since I read it. But basically, her daughter died. And her death was easily preventable by a vaccine or even a even a treatment cure. Tuberculosis is a, it's an easy... It's a deadly disease, but it's also easy to treat. But because Kelly LeBrock is like anti, anti-medicine, her daughter died because of it. So, but like I said, this, so the whole anti-vaxxer thing, it's nothing new. But it, it's, the, it, it, the process is pretty much repeating though. Um, but like I like I said, um, I used to I used to wear the mask grudgingly. I mean, especially I mean, and especially considering that I work the overnight shift, I'm very seldom out during peak hours. I'm at home, probably sleeping or probably streaming. So again, I'm not out during peak hours or anything. I work again. I work the overnight shift. The only people I consistently come into contact with are my coworkers. You know, my co-workers are managers, and that's it. And speaking of managers, um, yeah, um, we're, we are going through yet another management change. Um, the, the way our store structure kind of works, we have one store manager, and then we have, we have two second-in-commands. I think they're, they're co-managers. We have two co-managers. And then, and then we have uh, three shift managers, one for each shift. And below them, we have um, we have they're in our store. They're called team leads, but in the 
Back in the day, they were called support managers, and uh, each shift had three of them. So, that just kind of explain, just kind of explain how the how the uh, structure works. Uh, but now, the way they're doing it is uh, one of the one of the co-managers, um, like one of the um, it's a word I'm looking for. One of the second in commands now has to do the overnight shift. So they're doing all. So basically, the change in management is uh, among the call managers. There is now going to be a, a daytime call manager and a nighttime call manager. So it's you know it's like it's almost like they just don't trust us or something. You know, because now you know now they got to add that extra layer. So now these. You know, it's bad enough that the assistant... Oh, let me let me back up a bit here. Um, I'm one of those that... Despite my complaining about management... They actually have it worse than we do. Us people on the bottom end of the totem pole. Because they get it worse than... The, they get it the worst. Because they got their... They got their aforementioned call managers... Breathing down their necks. You know, telling them this has to be done, this has to be done. You know, et cetera, et cetera. Looking over their shoulder and in the worst case scenario micromanaging them and then they got then these these middle managers have to deal with us our you know our alleged lollygagging around screwing around you know having um at least in my experience these petty grievances against each other um you know i don't you know i don't want to i refuse to work this to i refuse to work this department or i refuse to work with this person over here and uh, middle management has to accommodate them now. And that's, I believe that that's policy. They have to accommodate them. So they're getting it from both ends, basically. So little surprise, I mean, little surprise as to why they're all, you know, why they're all grumpy and stuff. I mean, I draw the line, I mean, I draw the line at micromanaging and there's, we got a manager that's got a rather annoying habit of it. So, but again, it's, it's it's mainly because of that, but it's not because I hate management in general. But so kind of, so kind of fast forwarding back to what I was originally talking about, um, you know, so the middle managers they already have it bad enough. So now they're really gonna feel the pinch because now they got us, we got a second in command working the night shift with us now. So now. Middle management's going to be even more frustrated because they got a coal manager, a second in command. Sorry to sound like a broken record, but they got one of these guys, you know, breathing down their necks and looking over their shoulder. So, I got a feeling things are going to get worse now. But I mean, it's it's like it's like manage it's like it's like the that's like the higher brass is all getting more and more paranoid. I kind of wish I would have been. I kind of wish I would have been there on the meeting when they decided this. So, but um, there was something else I was wanting to say. I forgot what it was. All I know is, man, these are some kooky sounds. But like I said, this. But yeah, it, but uh, the sounds that you're hearing, I'm guessing is due to all the volcanic activity going on on this planet. Or moon, I should say. <sighs> okay, um... So I'm just going to go ahead and call it good here. Um, I've said all the things I... Or, excuse me. I pretty much said all the things I wanted to say this morning. So, so I'll just go ahead and kill it. Um, but otherwise, hey, thanks for thanks for tuning in and listening to me, everybody. I appreciate that. And hopefully I should be able to do another one of these tomorrow morning. But until then, bye for now.